Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. And here's a headline from CryptoComs. Barry Silbert indicates main difference between 2017 and 2020 bullish rallies. And so coming at this from the perspective of an XRP holder, I do definitely see quite a few differences and I want to point them out in this video. And I think it's all setting us up for something ridiculously incredible in terms of price action. Um, I've also got a story about um, XR, uh, XRP and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Flare network uh, a utility fork that's going to be coming up here. The snapshot date, as uh, I'm sure most of you at this point are well aware, occurring December 12th. Uh, there's, there's additional adoption that I want to share with you. And I, I cannot wait seriously to see um, what, what Spark ultimately is worth inside of the, like, the days, weeks, months uh, ahead as, as soon as it's ultimately traded on a cryptocurrency exchange because it's an exciting time think about this it's being supported by ripple and all sorts of other uh, major names in the world of crypto and right now it's worth zero and we as xrp holders get it for free and we get it first how about that if we choose to claim it anyway now i do want to be clear i do not have a financial background of any kind i am not offering financial advice and you absolutely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that i say i write i just think it's fun to talk about these topics and, uh, and make YouTube videos as a hobby. So I'm just an enthusiast, that, and I like to, you know, talking to my fellow XRP community members, but that's it. Uh, if you would please ever so delicately tap the like button, I'd appreciate the support, and consider subscribing if you've not yet done so. Because uh, if you're not even going to take my, my content at the price of free, well, well, gosh darn it, that just hurts my feelings. All right, into this piece now. Barry Silbert, CEO and founder of Digital Currency Group, a conglomerate of many blockchain-oriented services, including Grayscale and Coindesk, has compared the ongoing Bitcoin rally with the 2017 euphoria. Here's why institutional interest may be very far from being the key difference. Uh, yeah. So, so think about this. We're, we're talking about, look, we'll just look at where the prices are today for, for Bitcoin and XRP. You know, it's not that far off from where the prices were in December of 2017. But you know, look, and admittedly, there's there's a lot of excitement in the, especially in recent days. Let's say the last two three days in particular, is a notable uptick in interest, and that's because the market's been rallying. I got that, but it doesn't feel remotely like the the true euphoria that we were experiencing experiencing in uh, November and December of 2017. It just, to me, it's markedly different. Uh, you don't have the the you know crypto me well you have crypto media you don't have mainstream media uh, endlessly talking about this it gets picked up a little bit here or there but I mean think about it towards the end of 2017 on CNBC they were telling you how to buy Ripple and they meant XRP but they were telling you how to buy Ripple which is comical to me when it was like or maybe it was technically it, it was either late December 2017 or very early January 2018 when XRP was about. And it's, uh, it's all-time high. And then, of course, we know it retraced, what, over 90% ultimately, as did many altcoins, of course. And Bitcoin retraced like crazy as well. So it certainly wasn't unique to XRP. But nonetheless, I'm just saying you don't have that. You don't have that that that, that push up as uh, from result of this crazy media exposure. Yet here we are in terms of price action. What additionally is interesting to me is, is back then, in 2017, when I entered the world of crypto, it was November 2017, XRP... Like, it wasn't being used in the commercial production of anything. It was being used, uh, it was being piloted in XRapid, which is uh, was rebranded to uh, what we now know as on-demand liquidity today. So it was technically being used, but it was a beta version. It, it wasn't uh, it wasn't widely used at all. It was just kind of like there, there was a proof of concept phase, more or less, if you will. And so at that point when I was investing, I was like, well, it's not getting used yet. Not really. But it seems like it's really solving a serious problem if it, if it gets mainstream adopted. Like, there could really be something to this here. And so, you know, three years later, here we are, and it's functionally being used. You know, and, and it, it's, it's okay to say that, uh, you know, RippleNet's still, you know, it's a little in its baby years. It's in its nascency. That's okay. That's not some sort of knock against. It's just an acknowledgement that uh, what they're doing, it's audacious. And I mean that in the most positive of ways. It's... It's incredible what they're trying to do, building out the internet of value, changing fundamentally the way money moves around the planet with XRP at the core of their entire vision. I mean, it's astonishing. What you have to do to pull that off, it's incredible. So the fact that they even have six liquidity pools set up today, 
uh, which are cryptocurrency exchanges with a, a number of different corridors functioning today and bus business clients functionally paying to make this all, all happen, to tap into XRP as a liquidity tool. That's astonishing. In just three years, and, if, and we do see the pace of all of the adoption is increasing exponentially. And so what's going to happen, I suspect, is that as time passes, it's going to increasingly become less scary to invest the more the ecosystem gets built out. But it, that's why investing when I did three years ago, and even now, because the price isn't that different... It's, it, to me, it still represents an incredible opportunity because there's almost no money in XRP, the digital asset. You know, so it doesn't take much for asymmetrical gains. And so long as it continues to get used, I think you'll see continued adoption here. And so it would have been, uh, it was scarier to invest when I did initially than it is today, in my opinion. And it was even, it would have been even scarier, like, because like I've said, I wish I were in this space back when XRP was half a penny. And I'd like to think, and it's probably true, that I would have uh, recognized it as potentially something but even if i were around in 2015 when that was the price and before um it would have been a lot scarier than when i jumped in in 2017 so i don't know for sure how i would have responded i'll never never get to know but uh the interesting thing is as time passes the uncertainty dissipates that's true for for uh, xrp it's been true for bitcoin because it continually gets test and ecosystems continue to build out and so it's amazing to me that we have price levels today uh, not that far off from where they were at the end, uh, or say, let's just say, you know, November and maybe up to mid-December-ish, uh, December uh, 2017. We, we got price levels that are pretty close to what they were back then, but there's, in my humble opinion, uh, more, uh, more certainty than there was three years ago. Because, we, And for me, the reason I say that so confidently is because my entire investment thesis is, is that utility matters and will win the day. And I see utility. That represents value, which means that XRP deserves to have an open market price in perpetuity, so long as there continues to be real-world adoption. That's my personal opinion, which, again, is not financial advice. That's just what I believe. And, and so uh, I don't think enough people value XRP appropriately. I believe that XRP is supremely undervalued right now because people right now, they're just throwing money into all sorts of cryptocurrencies, not really based on fundamentals, just based on chasing whatever is hot at the moment. And market cycles are a real thing. So even if XRP gets propped up and it's not as much due to the fundamentals, increasingly, increasingly there, as time passes more people are going to recognize the importance of this. And so I'm one example. There are all sorts of people that jumped into crypto in 2017 that, uh, you know, they bought in close to Bitcoin, close to all-time highs, and, um, you know, they and they sold it on the way down, and they're burnt, and they go away. But there's some people that came in towards the time period, and I, I am among those people, that were like, huh, what a weird time to jump in, because I jumped in weeks before, like, the craziest XRP bull run, right before Bitcoin hit its all-time high of damn near $20,000. Weird time, cool time to jump in, but very weird to have ha happened to have stumbled upon crypto at that moment. But, uh, but, but just seeing the opportunity, you know, be because it, it, it could not be more clear to me that this is, this is not something that's going to go away so long as, as, as there's real world utility. And so anyway, the, the piece continues here, though. 2017 run was unexplainable. Silbert highlighted that his personal feelings do not resemble his feelings in 2017. Prominent investor and analyst Tor de Meester, the author of the Bitcoin Reformation Theory, asked him the main reason for this. And Silbert noted that in 2017... Nobody knew why crypto prices were rocketing. The phenomenon was totally inexplicable to the general public. In 2020, the situation changed, and an upsurge of digital asset prices can be reasonably explained by the profound trends. Meanwhile, no reporters have contacted Mr. Silbert over the past month, he claims. Um, this fact is interesting to him since their ignorance is, quote, great. And Silbert shared this take after the impressive announcement by his most popular project, Grayscale Investments Firm. Uh, this entity provides investors with exposure to crypto markets, eliminating the need to purchase crypto tokens directly. So uh, it's 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 fascinating here. Like to me, it, it does it does seem quite different. So it's it's like it's there's a more more of a sturdy foundation. Everything's been tested more, but there's less attention than there was three years ago. Still, the prices are where they are. It's fascinating. And so if the prices are here without that, that intense euphoria, what, what do you think is going to happen as this market cycle continues going down its inevitable path? What do you think is going to occur? Well, look, I don't pretend to know, and I, I don't make price predictions, 
But I suspect, which is different than a prediction, I suspect that we're going to be seeing some serious fireworks potentially sooner than later. I think that XRP and Bitcoin will both hit their all-time highs and smash through them. As far as the timeline, I don't know. But if, if there's true value to something, humans will flock to it. And so that's what I was saying earlier. Like I, I'm one of the humans that in 2017 entered the space, recognized the utility, and I stuck around. Some people left, but you're always going to get this increasing um, in increasing pool of people that are like, wait a minute, there is something to this. And I, I, I'm just one one little data point, you know, and, and so there you go. Um, into the next piece now. Um, here we go from you today. XRP flare fork dis distribution to be supported by South Korean exchange uh, Fobligate. Fobligate? I don't know how to say that. That's a silly name. Uh, the Flare team has spread the word on Twitter that another crypto exchange will join the group of partners who support XRP's utility fork and the Spark airdrop, during which tokens will be distributed to XRP holders. That crypto exchange is the South Korean platform Fobligate. Or Fobligate, Fobligate? It's kind of fun to say. Try it. Try it on your own at home. Fobligate. 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 Ah, there we go. I'm having a good time here. Today, November 16th, Fublegate, that's you have to say it all weird like that too, Fublegate, announced that it will provide support to the airdrop and help distribute Spark tokens to the XRP community. The date of the fork purposely falls on the 194th anniversary of Martha Colston's birthday. Colston was uh, an American inventor. The event will take place in less than a month on, uh, on December 12th, and that is when the snapshot of the XRP ledger for uh, distributing the token will be taken. And so there are a bunch of cryptocurrency exchanges. That might be... The last, num last number I knew was 18, so I th this might be the 19th cryptocurrency exchange to officially jump on board. I'm waiting for Binance, man. Come on, please tell me that Binance and Binance US are going to be jumping on board. That's that's what I'm waiting for. Because Binance is the biggest cryptocurrency exchange on the planet when measured by um, by, by trading volume. That would be something. That would bring some serious attention to it. And then just get, getting that many more humans speculating on the price of the the asset that we're about to get for free if we choose to claim it anyway. Uh, yeah, that's something. <sighs> Who knows what it's going to be worth, but... I won't be surprised if it's worth a fair bit because people get silly when uh, new assets hit markets. I've seen it firsthand. That is if, <coughs> whoa, <laughs> excuse me, a little, little unexpected cough at the end there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo. <laughs>